Toro. 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 <laughs> I'm dizzy. <laughs> And action! All right. <laughs> uh, my name is Mark Weir. I am originally from uh, the Dallas, Texas area. I have uh, lived all over the world, all over the states, and uh, Central and South America, Caribbean, uh, the Middle East, Europe, and uh, I finally decided I wanted to see South America. Uh, I decided uh, on three separate places. I wanted uh, either Brazil, Argentina, or Colombia, and I selected Colombia. Um, I flew down here about uh, eight months ago. I flew into Medellin, and when I saw the city, I thought this is nothing like I assumed it would be. Uh, before how, I, how was it different? Well, uh, I always assumed that uh, South America was, all of South America was a third world country. I didn't know. And when I saw Medellin, it was like, this is like the United States. And uh, just absolutely incredible. Uh, three, three and a half million people. Um, but there was only one problem with Medellin and that was the air pollution. <laughs> I am, uh, you know, an athlete. I like to get out and uh, lift weights in uh, the sunshine and the fresh air, but uh, the time I was there, there was no uh, fresh air. I like to run up the steep hills, things like this, but I couldn't do it because my lungs would burn. So I thought I need to find another place and everyone and their cousin told me that Manizales is probably the most beautiful place in all of Colombia. So I said, okay, that's where I'm going to live. Well, um, I had some friends who called me. They themselves had moved from the States to the Dominican Republic, and they wanted me to go see them. So I went to the island of Española, Dominican Republic, and stayed there for several months. But in the back of my mind, I knew I wanted to come back to uh, to see Manizales. Uh, the island was way too hot and of course Manizales is over 7,000 feet and it's just, to me it's the perfect temperature. And uh, when I flew in, uh, Lauren met me uh, the next day and brought me to this beautiful, beautiful place that I didn't know existed. Uh, Manizales itself is uh, Half of it is the older Manizales, but it kind of reminds you of being in Europe. There's a lot of uh, European architecture in the older city. Now the newer part of Manizales, which is uh, east, the east side of town, is like a little Manhattan, New York, but with palm trees. And uh, just absolutely gorgeous uh, place. And being so high up in altitude, the weather is stays between 65 and 75 degrees 99 percent of the time during the day and at night time uh, between 50 and 60 degrees at night so it's perfect perfect uh, sleeping weather um, i moved into uh, an airbnb uh, apartment and as soon as i stepped in the apartment and looked out my balcony i thought I don't want this for just a few days. I want to stay here permanently. And so I had uh, my assistant, Marcelo, uh, and how we met is very unusual, a uh, very unusual story, but we'll get to that maybe later. Uh, but uh, he is studying to be a lawyer. He's a law student right now. And uh, I asked him uh, to call the, the lady to see what she would offer or what she would want, the price. Um, and so she said $500, which is, 
Well, as an Airbnb, I was only paying 300. And I thought, she's, she wanted $200 more for me to stay permanently. And so uh, Marcelo said, don't worry, we'll, we'll negotiate with her. And so a couple of nights later, her and her husband came over to the apartment, sat right here on this couch, and Marcelo did his business. <laughs> for about one hour, he negotiated and uh, it went back and forth. And finally, uh, just before we met, I had gone to the ATM machine and pulled out a, almost 2,000 US dollars. And so the final thing was he, uh, he pulled the money out $2,000 and showed them and they said now how much uh, Will you give us for the apartment or give mark for the apartment? So we got him down from 500 to 310 dollars a month, and that's everything that's including all utilities and um, All the furnishings all I had to do is move in with my clothes. I even have a huge washer Which is, I haven't seen one that large here in South America at all uh, so I'm very happy, and it's very modern. Uh, we have a doorman. Does it have internet? It has internet, absolutely. And um, it came with it. Uh, cable, Netflix, every, uh, everything. Everything an Airbnb would have, I have. So 310 bucks. Now I do remember Lauren telling me, it's probably going to cost you $1,200 to live in Monte Rallis. And I thought, wow, that's a little higher than I thought, but I could afford it. But I actually can live easily here, since the apartment is so cheap, on 700 bucks a month. So how did you meet? I'll put uh, Marcella, how did you, we'll do that now. Uh, this was very interesting. Uh, Lauren and I decided, with along with his uh, young lady assistant, uh, Juliana is her name, uh, to take me to various places in the city just to get me familiar with the beauty and uh, some unique features. One of the places is called uh, Founders Park and uh, we were there for a little while and we were walking back uh, into town. We were kind of uh, looking for a taxi and uh, Lauren's assistant, uh, Juliana, was ta lagging behind us uh, a, a few feet away and uh, this young man, Marcelo, uh, he sees this woman and he's thinking that she is scoping us out, that she may rob us or have somebody rob us. And so he immediately came up to us and told us. And uh, we looked behind us to see who he was pointing at and it was Juliana. And so we had a good little laugh and uh, I thought, this is the guy I want to know. This is, this is someone who is very honest and very kind to perfect strangers. Um, wherever I've lived in the world, uh, I usually get an assistant. And the reason for that is because I'm legally blind and so I need help uh, going to grocery stores, doing odds and ends uh, in the city. Um, and when I've gone to these other countries and lived there for a while, I would usually use taxi drivers. I would just hire several different taxi drivers one day after another and just find one that uh, was, I thought, I connected with and uh, knew a little English. And so it's always worked. Well, this time I didn't even have to. He, he found us. I didn't have to find him. And. Uh, he offered to us, he said, I would like to take you around my beautiful city and show you around. And uh, he said, uh, I will do it for free. And of course, I would, I would never accept uh, gratis. Uh, I always pay. And um, so I thought, this is uh, the young man that uh, I'm going to use. And so we, uh, we negotiated. He didn't like talking about money, so I had Lauren uh, call him on the phone and negotiate for me. And so, if you're in, ever in Manizales and you need a guide, <laughs> Marcelo, uh, Marcelo is your man. Uh, it was such a neat experience uh, to meet him this way. 
not only was it, uh, it wasn't just him, it was also his uh, uh, girlfriend, Valentina, was with him. And so we've had a lot of fun together. We've gone out to eat many days. We've gone on different trips to Hot Springs, which are just right outside of the city, about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, they've taken me to various parks. Uh, if you come to Manizales, I definitely recommend that you use the gondola which takes you from one mountaintop to another mountaintop and uh, that was an experience. I knew about the gondola but I did not realize how high up the gondola was with the valley dropping below. It literally feels like you're in an airplane. It is so, so high up in the air. Uh, if you're uh, afraid of heights, uh, it might be something you might want to avoid. But uh, I have enjoyed Manizales greatly. I've been here since uh, September the 9th, and uh, today is October 7th, so almost a month. And I can promise you, even though I've lived all over the world, I don't want to go anywhere else. Manizales is that kind of a place. It is so beautiful, there is so much to do, and as the people said in uh, Medellin, who recommended Manizales, uh, saying that it was the most beautiful place in all Colombia. I, it might be the most beautiful place on earth. It is just gorgeous, just gorgeous. And I... <laughs> I'm dizzy. <laughs> Unbelievable, this is incredible. They say that 12,000 people can sit in here it is uh, the size of a small baseball field and the echo is incredible. So I can only imagine 12,000 people saying Toro and Ole, Ole and <laughs> uh, because I can hear my voice echoing off of the uh, building surrounding me. This is amazing, amazing. I've always seen uh, this before, but never, uh... are you still videoing? Yes. Okay, remember the Three Stooges when they had a, they were in the bull ring uh, fighting with the bull and <laughs> all the craziness. So uh, I finally make one. This uh, Manizales is, uh, they love uh, the bull fighting. Uh, this is very special to them. Gorgeous. And I am never leaving. I'm never going back to the States. I'm, I'm, obviously I'm going to travel, but this is going to be my home for now on. Now where are you going tomorrow? Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday actually, uh, Marcelo and I are going up to a, another hot springs that is about, uh, it's over 11,000 feet high, and uh, there is a, it's right next to a volcano. It's just uh, about um, uh, 12 kilometers, there's a hotel there and uh, the hot springs are there, you can go bird watching, uh, but at that altitude I don't see why birds would be, be so high, it's pretty cold. And then of course the volcano is snow capped, and uh, I believe it's a active volcano, Marcelo? Yes. It is an active volcano. But well, we'll go up there and take a look, and uh, the altitude, I've always had uh, difficulty with uh, altitude over 10,000 feet, so there is a drink here in Colombia that they'll feed you. It's uh, the cocoa leaf, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they make it into a tea which helps altitude sickness. Uh, another thing about Manizales that I love are uh, the people. Um, the people have been so friendly to me. Uh, perfect strangers, and th this is what was so exceptional, perfect strangers uh, wanted to know my, my story, why I'm here, and uh, when I tell them I've come here to live permanently, uh, it just kind of blows their mind. They they don't understand why uh, some gringo for, from the United States would come down and want to live in their little city when they wish to go to, to the United States. And uh, they just don't realize how good they have it here. Yeah. Um, these that uh, have spoken to me, uh, they when they heard that I wanted to stay, wanted everyone in their family uh, to know me. So they invite me over to their home, again, perfect strangers, for a meal, and I, I meet uh, 
their immediate family and aunts and uncles and grandma and grandpa and it's it's been a lot of fun. I have truly, truly fallen in love with the uh, Colombian people, especially here in uh, Manizales. They're great. And it's quite possible too, uh, because I'm legally blind, I'm out and about with a white cane and they understand uh, what the white cane means. Uh, I don't know why I doubted that when I first got here, but they do. And it might be that uh, that's the reason uh, too. They're fascinated with my getting around as well as I do. And uh, they're very helpful uh, when I need help. And so, uh, yes, very kind, very kind. So how is your Spanish coming? Uh, I, I am surprising myself on a daily basis. I'm having little conversations and not even thinking about it. And then when I separate myself and give it some thought, I'm thinking, I just understood what they said and they understood me. Now, whether, whether it was good or not, uh, obviously it wouldn't be. Uh, uh, I'm not even close to being fluent, but I did understand and we did communicate. And that's another thing. Um, when you come to uh, a Latin American country, um, the people appreciate the gringo, and down here, gringo doesn't mean a bad, <laughs> uh, like it does maybe, you know, in Mexico or in Texas. Uh, but the white person who comes down here and tries to speak their language, they love it. They absolutely love it. And if you love their culture and you love their city, and then they will love you too. So, and it doesn't take much. Just use some basic words. Most people know, uh, hola, como esta, uh, uh, things like this, buenos dias, buenas noches. Uh, just the attempt that you're trying to communicate in their language makes them very happy. And they're happy that uh, you are here. I highly, highly recommend anyone who wants to travel, uh, who wants to in, enjoy a culture that is just, it's amazing, to, to come to Colombia. Colombia is just a wonderful, wonderful country. Um, and I especially want to talk to retirees who are living t on a tight budget. Um, you can live a middle class, upper middle class life here in Colombia with just a social security check. Uh, you would be very surprised. The food is delicious, it's healthy, the air is good except for Medellin uh, in some times of the year. Um, and then the wilderness, the wilderness around you, um, the Andes Mountains, which surround this area now, are just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And uh, we have driven through um, the valleys and uh, have gone through uh, uh, surrounding mountain, mountain ranges. And it, it's nothing like I have ever seen. I cannot compare it to any other place. It is unique in itself. So, remember, I am blind, and I moved to Colombia blind. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs>